Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a twin flame channel and Western astrologer and this is a video about the full moon in Sagittarius for twin flames occurring on June 14th, 2022 at 7.51 a.m. If you happen to live on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. Welcome back. This is another very interesting, very revealing full moon for all of us. And uh, we've, let me just see, do I have any announcements? I think I do. I actually do have some announcements. Um, first one is that I have two 30 minute sessions available next week. If you want to grab them, best place to do that is over at kmoonastro.com. Um, and I'm scheduled to do a Q&A with Kay in the month of June, July, and I'm just scratching my head about what to offer it on. I offered it twice. It's an annual four-week program that I do in the summers in the Northern Hemisphere. That is a mentorship program for lightworkers and twin souls that typically has a theme to it where I teach for about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe sometimes 40 at the beginning. And then there's just open Q&A and open channeled messages in the latter part of the class. So I'm curious what you'd like to hear for a theme. If you're willing to drop that in the comments, that would be incredible. I did one in 2020 about welcoming home the runner in you. And I did one in 2021 that was all about uh, mirror work and understanding the divine mirrors in your connection as a twin soul. So have a, have, have a thought, make a comment. I'd love to know what you'd like to hear about for Q and a with K 2022. Uh, and lastly, I have some channeled messages that I have been sitting on. I have not released them. And one's gonna come out right after this because it really kind of came in tandem in a conversation I had with Made for Love. If you're not subscribed to her channel, I highly recommend it. Phenomenal reader, phenomenal healer. Check out Made for Love. We had a conversation earlier today as I was prepping for this full moon and Sagittarius video and some channeled messages came through about what this time period represents for twins. So I'll excerpt and snippet that and share it with you guys. Okay, let's get into this full moon. Full moon takes place here at sun, 23 degrees Gemini, full moon and Sagittarius here, 23 degrees Sag. I love Sag and Gemini energy. It's all about thought and communication, mind and mouth, really moving forward in the world of clarity, except, but Neptune is sitting square to this particular configuration at this time. So clarity is going to be real hard to come by. Because of this configuration, Neptune likes to wash away all of that, which it touches. It likes to artify them, if you will, um, add some decorations, a little embellishment, a little color, it likes to obscure things, maybe soften out and round the edges. Uh, Neptune can bring in lies and deception. It can bring in arts and creativity. It can just bring in a looseness with clarity and a looseness with the truth. And so understanding things from a place of clarity at this juncture is going to be really, really hard uh, for both counterparts, both you can see Jupiter, divine masculine, Juno, divine feminine. Neither one of them is too far away from Neptune. Neptune is about 10 degrees away from both of them. And so because of this, what we have going on is a Neptunian influence in divine counterpartships that are, it's creating some fog. It's creating an inability to really see with clear eyes precisely what's going on. I remember at the last lunation, a message coming through as I examined, the, especially the position of the divine feminine, that things may not appear in the way that they are that what you're seeing and what reality is may not be like a one for one accuracy. And that was due to the position of Mercury, our clarity, clarifier and communicator. Mercury's position in relationship to the divine feminine wasn't helping. Now it's the sun, moon, the illuminators, 
still not helping in position to Neptune. So this is gonna take some time, a little bit of time before full clarity comes in. Your relationship to hanging out in the phrase, I don't know. I just, I don't know the answer right now. Your relationship to not knowing is what's gonna be highlighted through this illumination. If you don't know, and then you like freak out and pause and like freeze when you don't know, that may be what you're seeing within yourself. If you're the kind of person who doesn't know, and then you have to like get a million readings, that may come up within yourself. If your relationship to I don't know the answer is to like seek a whole bunch of external advice from friends and family, that may come up because both Gemini and Sagittarius are our talkers of the Zodiac. If your relationship to I don't know is to go within and, you know, query yourself until you get an answer, you may see that come up during this lunation. Whatever your personal relationship is to not having an answer is what may come up. Neptune can also really talk, especially when Pluto is in the mix. And Pluto is, is in the mix a little bit at this time um, in its relationship to Jupiter more than Juno. Uh, Jupiter being the divine masculine energy, not necessarily a person, but an energy. Addictions can come up during this time too if your relationship to not having an answer is escape. And so escape can come in all sorts of formats, you know, video games, sex, you know, food, substances, um, you know, addictions to people, all of that can kind of show up during this particular lunation. Uh, if it's very uncomfortable for you to be in, I don't know, especially given how closely linked to this Neptunian energy, which is highly influential on the full moon in Sagittarius, the two counterparts are, the two counterparts are very close to this Neptune, a little closer than I would like, um, but certainly not close enough to be a complete fog fest, um, but close enough to be, create a little confusion. Um, and so where you feel compelled to reach for clarity in your connection, I would give it a pause for now. I would give it a pause, give it a rest, the divine purpose of these moments in time where our conscious mind is superseded by, you know, source consciousness is that we have the opportunity for, you know, things to shift, things to move around that we can't control, which is certainly what we've had a lot of through the eclipse cycle that we just completed. I don't know if you guys ever played, there was a game I played as a child. I remember playing it at birthday parties where um, someone would turn the lights off and kids would have to scramble for a chair. It was like musical chairs, but with the lights turned off. And so now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that's horribly dangerous for children. <laughs> but you know, it was the eighties. We did a lot of dangerous things as kids. So all of that to say, you know, I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting here is that if you're trying to scramble for a chair, scramble for a seat, scramble for clarity, you could end up knocking into things or needing, hurting yourself or hurting the connection or needing to redo things, apologize later, take back certain words said. Um, this is the moment in time to really just sit back, breathe, put it in source's hands and just say, you know what? I surrender. You do you. Let me know when you have come to clarity. And so whomever you pray to, you know, God, source, Allah, the universe, however you co-create and co-manifest, this is that moment in time where the benefit of that, of this not knowingness is knowing that even though you can't with your conscious mind grasp for clarity, you are part of a conscious collective and source is working with you. Your team is working with you to arrange things behind the scenes to help you get to clarity in the fullness of time. In other words, another way to put it is if you make a decision, 
ah, it's like these game shows. Yes. That's another vibe that I'm getting. They're trying to like, give me analogies to help you understand how to work with this. Um, there were these game shows, uh, you know, in the eighties and the nineties, maybe the early two thousands where, you know, the contestants would get the opportunity to pick prizes that they couldn't see. And so there would be door number one, door number two, door number three. And so, and <laughs> the unfortunate thing is sometimes you get like a booby prize where it was like, Door number one was a like brand new Corvette or like convertible car. Door number two would be um, an all expense paid trip to someplace magical. And then door number three would be like uh, a sofa, <laughs> something random. Right. And so, you know, if people we're trying to force a decision before all the doors were revealed, which is how the game shows worked. You could end up getting a booby prize instead of getting the thing you wanted. And so that's this energy right now is like all the facts are not on the table. All of the information that you need to be clear is not yet here. The situations, the circumstances, they've not yet played out. And so decisions made in this energy don't give you the best opportunity to get the best result. And that's why this is a really beautiful moment for pause and placing it in the divine's hands and just saying, you let me know once you've worked it out. The other way to work with this, because it is a T-squaring energy, you can always lean into and count on Virgo. Gotta love that Virgo energy. Virgos get a real bad rap, but there's a reason why they're included in the crucial 12. Virgo in energy is discerning. It's nuanced. It has the capacity to look for details and to have, uh, like it's a separatist energy of understanding the difference between this and that. Even if they're both four letter words, they have different meanings, different usages, this and that. Um, and so if you're good at Virgo energy, this would be a period of time where you might have more illumination. But if you're one of these late born Virgos in September, you might have a little less illumination or placements at the later degrees of Virgo. It might be a little harder to get clear. Um, but if Virgo and energy is not your strong suit, it's definitely not mine. This is a great time to kick back and just let life do what it's going to do. Let the information come forward in the time span it's going to come forward in. Let dynamics shift. And then once you have more information, then give yourself permission to make a decision. Um, but if, you know, if you can just give yourself that grace and space and that time to hang out you're going to find that you get much better options, much better results. You make a decision that you don't have to retract later on. Okay. So that's this full moon in Sagittarius energy. It's going to be with us, you know, as you know, in a peak fashion, as we hit the full moon and waning slightly from there until we get to the next new moon. Uh, but that's what we have going on here now. Let's have a conversation about the divine feminine energy. That's Juno. Uh, and if you want to look at this stuff in your chart, definitely book some time with me over at K-Moon Astro. Like I said, I have those two 30-minute sessions available uh, this coming Wednesday and Thursday, but move quickly because if you don't see them when you go over to my website, it's because they've already been booked and they can go fast. We have the divine feminine having an interesting conversation here with the planetary energy called Neptune. The ne not Neptune, Nessus. Golly, go away, Neptune. Just go away. Um, Nessus here has an energy of being a bit obsessive and not just obsessive, but also compulsive. Uh, it's an energy where you know, you can ruminate and ruminate and ruminate until you just kind of go, fine, I'm going to do something about it. And that's something that you do could actually be very destructive. Juno and Nessus are going to be hanging out for a, a nice long period of time this year. Um, as she retrogrades back and forth in the sign of Pisces, 
And this placement in Pisces is significant for the divine feminine energetic fields. Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. It is correlated with the planet Neptune. It's our connection to the spirit world source, the void, the veil, if you will. It's our ability to reach beyond what can be known through our five corporeal senses and to have interaction with that which lives outside and beyond those senses. And so with Nessus sitting here, Pisces being the final sign of the zodiac before we rebirth ourselves into the first sign of the wheel. Inside our feminine energy fields is an opportunity for review. It's an opportunity for digestion and integration. It's a chance to go within and have a look what happened as Juno rolled through the preceding 12 signs? What did we get from it? What did we learn? How did we, where have we been? Who have we become? What do we regret? What do we rejoice over? What were our choices? What do, what would we like to choose if we were given another chance? This is the cycle of Juno. Now, Juno tends to kind of make her way around the wheel. She can be in one sign for a long time, but she's kind of an 11 monther. Um, when she is mo when she's on the move, it's about 11 months movement around the wheel. Let me just pause here and see when was the last time she was in Pisces. So I can give you an exact time frame for this review so you know what you're reviewing. Okay, so the last time we had Juno in Pisces uh, was 2018, February of 2018. So this is a hefty review period for a lot of my clients, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. These were years of significant transformation and change, both in their twin connection and in their journey, their ascension journeys as well. Spiritual gifts came online during this time. And so this is that per same period of review. Um, looking back from about February of 2018, all the way through now, what happened? Taking stock, giving yourself permission to look and see how far you have come and where you'd still like to go and grow. That's the gifting of this time period. Now, let me tell you, Nessus is not an easy teacher. Nessus teaches through rumination. It teaches through compulsivity. It teaches through, you know, looping thoughts um, and obsession. So the places to pay attention to, the places that need your divine feminine energy most are going to be those places that just keep replaying themselves for you keep coming up specifically because Juno in mundane astrology represents relationship and partnership. So where there have been lessons, but there has been no resolution where things have come up, but they haven't been laid to rest where there has been pain, but there has been no forgiveness, you know, no compassion. These are the places that are likely to come up now because before Juno moves out of Pisces, what she's trying to do is create closure, create completion, lay the past to rest, draw a line between the past and the future. Now, Jupiter has already done this. You can see the divine masculine energy here takes Jupiter 11, sorry, 12 years to get around the wheel. Jupiter spent the first six months of this year in Pisces. It was a very internal period of time for a lot of divine masculine energies where that part of us just kind of went a little asleep, was a little offline. That part of us was within. Now Juno is in Pisces. And so the Juno energy is now going to be a little sleep, a little offline, a little within as it works to create completion and closure from the last chapter moving into the next. Okay. So 
that's how this energy works. Where you are finding yourself struggling with those kinds of thoughts of like the obsession, the rumination, know that it's your mind trying to work with you to point out where you have healing work to do this year before Juno pops out in Aries and the union window peaks in January of 2023. All good. No pressure. You just got six months. You can do it. I believe in you. (laughs) Um, Now for some of us, some people who some people really identify uh, Juno and themselves as divine feminine. There are reasons and times in a connection where you might be exploring a polarity. You may find that in your connection, you're exploring, embodying, and engendering mostly divine feminine energy and no, like very little to none divine masculine energy. So if you're identifying yourself as divine feminine at this time. You won't always feel that way, but sometimes we go through these periods of exploration. For those of you who find yourself in this camp, this can play out in three different ways. Um, (sighs) Juno square or Juno conjunct Nessus speaking way too loudly this year with Neptune, Neptune creating fog. For some of you, this is a test. For some of you, this is a, even when you're not clear, even when you can't see the path, do you really want it? So I was like going over my notes for this, that Ricky Martin song like popped in my head. (laughs) And all I kept hearing was Ricky Martin shouting in my ear, like, do you really want it? (laughs) So (laughs) this is that for some of you, like even when you can't see the way, even when things are unclear, even when the connection doesn't have you know, some of the hallmarks and aspects of third dimensional manifestation you might like to see, because notice neither one of these are in an earth sign. Um, Do you still want it? So for some of you, this is a test. You could look at it as a check-in, you know, like the universe giving you an opening for other options. That's the second way this could play out. Um, because some of you have been both shown and told by your counterpart, this isn't for me. This isn't my lifetime for this. So I, 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 I liberate you. I set you free to the best of your own ability to move forward. And I have met some of you inside of my sessions who are like, wow, this person, this is a new person has come into my world, um, and is presenting as beautiful masculine energy and my twin has not been on the scene in years so what do I do and I'm like do you really want it no I don't really say that to them but I'm I do say that I can see here in the chart that this energy there has been a an energy that's moving through divine counterpart collective that's saying, listen, union energy is anchoring. If you can get unattached to the body, it comes through love is here, get attached to love anchoring and love will anchor for you. And so this is giving us that kind of option and opening for love to anchor regardless of the person it comes through. So like I said, for some of you, it's a test for other of you. It's like an opening for other options and still for others. It's a pause. The third way this can play out is like a pause and really getting into like, who am I? What do I want? And what do I want to detox and leave in my last chapter? What do I want to open up in my next chapter? It's an opportunity for the divine feminine to manifest herself manifest her own energy, manifest who she really is, independent of who's here and who's not. Okay. And this is going to be, you know, especially true for the long journeyers. Those of you who have been at this since, you know, for years and years, like longer than 2018, for those of you who have been at this for several years, you're going to find that this period of self-cultivation, this period of time that focuses on, you know, detoxing the past, leaving that behind, moving into the future, this period for 2022 will be a significant prelude 
to something really big happening uh, in your love life and in your work life as you move forward when the two come together next year in Aries, okay? Um, for the divine feminine energies who have felt like they've been like carrying the connection in some way, um, this is your opportunity to take a break. Take a break from needing to know it all. Take a break from needing to have all the answers. Take a break. This is your chance to breathe before a new cycle begins. Uh, and that's that's a good thing. We have right, right now divine masculine energy out in front of divine feminine energy. For a while, it's been the opposite way around, divine feminine energy out in front of divine masculine energy, kind of paving the way for what happens in the connection next. There's a little, from my headstrong DFs, it's hard out here to be behind and not out in front. I get it. I get it. But this is your Pisces energy. It is about surrender, learning how to go with the flow. This is a huge, huge lesson for those who identify an exclusively divine feminine energy. You don't have a balanced masculine and feminine energy within you. You're really working more exclusively with that divine feminine energy template. This, this, is, this is the divine, I don't know, we'll see. This is your chance to surrender, to give it over, to place yourself in the very capable hands of the divine and take your hands off of the steering wheel of your connection, okay? Um, and how you're responding to it this year is, it's revealing. How we're all responding to it is revealing. How do we respond to the need to surrender? Do we fight against it? Do we struggle? Do we lash out? You know, do we get high and check out? Do we try to escape? Do we party? You know, do we try to scramble for control in any way we can get it? You know, the surrender energy is, it's in Pisces too, is a part of the a necessary part of the critical 12. It's an energy we all have to learn. And right now it's infusing divine feminine energy fields for the next 11 months. So there we, well, we've already started it. So for a total, um, I think of 11. So here we are. <sighs> Do you have any good songs about surrender? Leave them in the comments. I would say I'm not good at it. <laughs> Little secret about me. It's not my strong suit, despite having an abundance of Pisces energy in my chart. <laughs> one of these energies where I'm like, I'll just use that for spiritual knowledge. I don't need to surrender. And even I'm being taught deeper lessons about what it means to go with the flow, what it means to operate in divine order and divine timing, what it means to allow rather than to um, create, to give myself over to the divine rather than try to force through. So um, all of that is a work in progress for everyone who's got divine feminine energy. And we all have it to some degree that we're in a way that we work in our bodies, some more than others. So there's that. Okay, let's see. Letting the connection do what it needs to do. Yes. Spiritual energy of completing a process or a cycle. Talked about it. Review period is from 2018 to now. Put it to rest before the rebirth in Aries. Check, check. Said that. Channeled messages on this forthcoming from my conversation with Made for Love. Yes, yes. Um, now, one other very important thing to say for divine feminine energies. Several weeks ago, I can't remember which lunation it was, we had a meetup and it was in April. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. That's not what I, where I want to go. It was in April of Juno and Mars. Yeah, buddy. So it was literally a month ago. Here's Juno, here's Mars. This is divine feminine energy pairing up with a soulmate. So that window opened in April. Now, let me show you Mars represents the masculine soulmate, Jupiter, the divine masculine energy in the way that I read. When we go forward in time to July, 
what we have here is an initiation for the masculine soulmate as we get to late July, where we have masculine soulmate meeting up with the original divine counterpart, the divine activator, that's Uranus, speaking to the North Node, the direction of travel. So this window of time has opened up for divine feminine energies to have the option for those of you who are ready for it, seeking it, desiring it, um, who need it, because like I said, maybe your divine counterpart has said to you, not for me, not this lifetime, and has been off the scene for years. This is an energy of a divine counterpart energy coming in that starts perhaps slow, looking maybe a little like a soulmate. Maybe you're not all the way into it until, until Uranus, Mars, North Node meet up and bring into that soulmate's energy field a divinity activation and initiates them into deeper levels of love, deeper levels of understanding. This energy comes forward for feminine soulmate energy next year. Um, and we'll talk about it when we get there, but it starts first with masculine soulmate energy there. And so there's this energy of options. There's this energy of love will come. You just need to give yourself permission to allow love in the shape that love wants to come in and not get attached to it looking a certain way, being with a certain person. For those of you who are ready for that, now I'm very clear, some, many of you are going through the purification process. I've spoken about that in a video I have on this channel where you're just not open. You're not open to love at this time. There's some deeper lessons you're learning about what unconditional actually means in your counterpart's absence. You can find that channeled message in the channeled message playlist if that's what's going on for you where you're like, I can't even fathom being with somebody not my counterpart. Have a listen to the purification process. It'll help you understand what's happening and why what I'm saying doesn't feel applicable to you at this time, okay? Um, but for those of you, like, again, this is going to apply more for the people who've been on the journey for years. This is, you know, your heart has settled into the separation. This is an opportunity for divine love to reawaken it again. And here we are, like the love energy is coming in, in this union window. Now, the same way that I told you that this divine masculine energy gets activated in June sorry, late July. In April of 2023, we have a similar meetup, like I said, going on for divine feminine energy. Um, let, me, let me take a look. And this is actually, this is now we've got Uranus, we've got Venus, and we've got the North Node all coming together here. This is now, literally right now, full moon in Sagittarius, we have an initiation for soulmate female energy to show up um, for those masculines who are ready for that. There are some people who have, you know, for reasons they can't be with their counterpart um, at this time, but that doesn't mean you, you are, you know, not given the chance to have love come in. You too are given the chance to have love come in. And this is the kind of transit that could certainly bring it for you as long as you're open to it. Now, again, this Nessus Juno energy for some people who are anchoring more exclusively in divine feminine energy, it can make it really hard to lift up your head and like look around and let love in. Um, but it's here. It's here nonetheless. If you're willing to be open, willing to allow it, you don't have to force it. You don't have to go seek it out. None of that. It's it, like this kind of energy is the energy where love comes to you to a degree. Love arrives for you. You just have to be willing to really allow it and overcome your own attachments to the past and what you thought things would look like in order to allow it to come in. So, okay, that's the interpretation for divine feminine energy. Um, let's go on to what I have been shown for divine masculine energy. Here is Jupiter. 
right here at that fifth degree of Aries, like I said, sitting way too close to Neptune for my comfort. Um, but Jupiter out in front of the two, the leader in the connection at this point in time, whatever's going on in our divine masculine energy fields is what's paving the way for the connection to move forward. So it's important to really pay attention to the placement and the house that transit Jupiter is moving through what house covers Aries. Cause that's the area of life for you, where you're being asked to leverage your own divine masculine energy and really begin paving the way for union energy in your own life. Okay. Um, there's a holding space whenever one is in front of the other there's a bit of a holding space energy and they flip and reverse all the time there's never one always in front they constantly go back and forth um but whenever one's out in front like divine masculine and it's at this time that one is paving the way for the other energy to manifest themselves and like i said divine feminine energy at this time is shedding forgiving healing manifesting herself over in pisces okay um just to there's one last thing that came through here on the divine feminine energy for those of you who've really struggled as she's been in pisces this year some are going to feel better um, when she gets into Aries in January. You'll feel more like yourself. Some of the dreaminess of Pisces will shake off so that you can feel more awake, more present, more alive. And some will really only feel more alive after she meets with Uranus next April. You'll find that that's the beginning of a new cycle for you when she meets with the divine activator, which is Uranus next April. So again, this is a period of a breather. It's a period of a break. It's a period of not needing to have control over everything all the time. So if you found yourself wanting to throw your computer or your device when I said next April, relax, calm down, <laughs> take a breath this pause is a necessary pause and it's giving you a gift if you're willing to lean into receiving it in your feminine energy. Okay. Getting back here to Jupiter divine masculine energy. Um, he doesn't meet up with Uranus for another couple of years. So <sighs> got a little time on the transformation that's going to come with that but meanwhile right right now we've got jupiter speaking to mercury in a sextile format that mercury that was just retrograde um and this mercury is heavily influenced by saturn the boundary maker the restorer of integrity and wholeness pluto the uh our placement of personal power with mercury under such heavy influence from saturn and pluto jupiter is having a conversation of conscious awareness about where yes more boundaries yes more standing in my power must happen for life to work well for me so that's how that energy can work at this time sextile energy can it can gift you, it can bless us, but in order for it to, for blessing to occur, we actually have to be willing to work with it. Um, it doesn't just kind of come into our world and bless us. And so there's an energy here of, again, some difficult truths needing to be faced. And I talked a lot about this in the light worker energy update, the way Saturn and Pluto and Mercury are all having a conversation together. Now Jupiter's in the mix with them. In the divine masculine energy fields, this is really talking about facing some, facing some things that we'd rather not be true that are just true definitely true at this point and there's no escaping the truth of these things we can't hide from them gloss them over anymore um and this this neptune square the full moon energy that we have going on here certainly is like the last ditch effort at trying to pretend like what we know to be true just isn't 
it's not going to continue to be possible, especially as divine masculine energy continues to pull forward to that eighth degree of Aries before it retrogrades back. There's just too many things that have happened in the evidential world that are showing us it's time to grow. It's time to change. It's time to move forward in certain ways. And that Jupiter sextile Mercury via this Mercury retrograde and that Mercury being so heavily influenced by Saturn and Pluto via this Mercury retrograde is really bringing those things up so that we can, in our own divine masculine energy fields, begin to mature in the way that we lead our innate internal divine feminine energy. It's asking us to make more space for her. It's asking us to make more, um, be more accountable for the things that happen to her and the way we treat her internally. Again, I'm not talking about, you know, old school rules, the man protects the woman, all this and that. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that we all have both energies and in the duality, it's our masculine energy that internally provides and protects for our feminine, creative, receptive energy forces. So all of that to say, there is a real kind of like grow up kind of energy here. And with growing up comes growing pains and you're never too old to grow up or have growing pains. We, as long as we're in a body with breath, there's growth. <laughs> so much fun. Are you guys having fun yet? I'm having so much fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jupiter sextile, Pluto, restoration of personal power in our divine masculine energy fields, which is exciting if we're willing to actually take it. The sextile again means there's work that has to be done to exercise that power. It's not just like, oh, I wake up and I feel powerful. No. Capricorn, Pluto changes to the third dimension, mostly around work and money, per, perchance in some cases, traditional 3D structures, Aries, the individual, the self, there's a real need here for the self to change the outer world. That's a very literal interpretation there where our divine masculine energy internally has to change our outer world. Um, and so, so there's some themes of awareness and I've kind of been following where these planets, cause these planets have been huge markers of what has changed our societies, our cultures, the way we live, work and play the way we family, the way we friend, the way we couple and partner, um, it's Saturn, Pluto, and the movement of Jupiter, these three together have created such a significant amount of shift since 2020, because that's when they all three came together in major energy configurations was in 2020. And these, this is rare energies when they all come together, which is why 2020 was such a cataclysmic year. Now, you know, they're all in configuration talking to Mercury. And during 2020, they spoke to Mercury in challenging revelatory revelation making aspect four times. So thematically in our divine masculine energy fields, there may be themes that came up in January of 2020, April of 2020, June of 2020, and September of 2020, little nudges, little wake up calls, little pieces of revelation, little passing thoughts that at that time were like ideas. They were buds. They were at that time, you know, kind of this mm, revelations about what needed to change. Now that Jupiter is in Aries, Aries is ambition, motivation, power to move forward. Now that we've got this going, this new energy in our divine masculine energy fields, now we can take stock of what those revelations were and put them into action in the latter part of this year. So that's part of what really makes this year very exciting is this Jupiter and Aries energy is allowing us an opportunity for implementation, for putting together. It's like we got a box of puzzle pieces and this is the year we actually get to put them all together, which is very exciting. 
Okay. Jupiter is having uh, more conversations here. Divine masculine energy is hanging out in uh, a grand cross that probably nobody but me is wanting to talk about because <laughs> it includes so many minor, I use air quotes there, planetary energies. We've got shamans, asteroid, we've got Lilith, we've got Pholus. Um, grand cross energy is tough energy. It's challenging energy. It's the energy of feeling caught between a rock and a hard place. And the rock and the hard place has to do with our own will and what it is we actually want. The problems that other people have brought to our doorstep, that's fullness. And then the hard lessons we've had to learn. The lesson, the things we've had to do the hard way to become who we are, that shaman's asteroid. When I put all of this together and I see it in divine masculine energy fields, uh, this is telling me that there's like a crucible energy going on in divine masculine energy fields. There's this pressure that makes diamonds going on in these fields. And so there's this energy of like, must change. I cannot stay the same. This is beautiful energy that's catalytic because it's a cardinal grand cross. Cardinal energies take initiative. And with this, because you're between a rock and a hard place, there's kind of like only one thing left to do. So a lot of the excuses that we've been able to have for ourselves you know, during the pandemic and the year after the pandemic about why we haven't changed, why we're not in the place we want to be yet, why the things that have manifested for us have gone the way they've gone. You know, there's this moment of a pin drop in our divine masculine energy fields that's talking about, it's kind of giving us that, yeah, you can't use that as an excuse anymore. <laughs> you kind of need to like, again, it's this vibration of growing up into, you know, whatever the next chapter is as Jupiter comes to rest in the first sign of the Zodiac and begin a brand new cycle. Okay. So, um, lots of, lots of good, 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 good stuff here. Um, overall, I would say, Nothing really came through as I was sitting with this around divine masculine energy that's manifesting as a person. I guess you could say that there's probably a lot of movement and growth in the world, in the third dimensional world, family work um, and relationship and divine masculine energy fields. And there was certainly a period of time a few weeks back, again, that period of time in April where it did look like soulmate energy could come through. But now that I'm looking at the energy of the latter half of the year, this doesn't look very focused on love and relationships and divine masculine energy fields. It looks very focused on gotta be, gotta become, gotta grow, gotta break out, gotta break free. Um, and now that queen song, um, I wanna break free is like coming to coming to mind. And it's definitely the vibe I'm getting in the divine masculine energy fields as we move into the second half of the year, this kind of shape throwing off of the shackles of the past. And so for those of you that remember the channeled messages for divine counterparts for 2020, there was a specific message that had come in for divine masculine energies that there would be a process of initiation ongoing through 2024. My guides really relate it to me in, as a version of the hero's journey. And I walked you through what to expect, what the process could look like and the different stages of it. As I'm looking at this energy and seeing Jupiter pop out inside of Aries, again, if you're exploring divine masculine energy as a person, right, you're holding more divine masculine energy than you are divine feminine energy. There's not a lot of that receptivity going on. And there's reasons, reasons why you would need to work more with one than another different stages of life require different things. If you go back to that video, there was a step, a step in the process that was post-crisis, but pre-rebirth, 
where there's a lot of silence and there's a lot of growth and there's a lot of, let me get right with myself before I try to make things right with anyone else. This would be some of the collective energy that I'm seeing unfold at this time with Jupiter in Aries, having this particular grand cross conversation that I just mentioned. It's this recognition in our own divine masculine energy fields. If I can't get this right with me, there's no way I'm going to make anything work with another person in any capacity. Um, so there's this like wake up call. It's wake up call energy here and lots of power and motivation to actually do something about the revelations and the wake up calls that we have received post 2020. All right. Good God. Did I get through all of it? Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. What does this note say? July is a crucial month. The warm up is now. Venus conjunct Uranus. Uranus conjunct North. Yeah, I did speak about all of that. Okay. Okay, got it. I got it all. Whew. What a transmission. Thank you guys so much. And like I said, if you would like to get a reading, Hit me up at kmoonastro.com. If you've got ideas for Q&A with Kay, pop them in the comments below. I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are. And um, <laughs> what was the third announcement? Yes, channeled messages forthcoming. I love you guys. It's my pleasure and honor to be here with you. Thank you so much for all of the ways in which you support the channel. It's been a gift to serve. Take great care and bye for now.